Hello dear, welcome yet again to another interesting section with Guided Dreams. My name is Dr. C.T. Onyema. Welcome to our YouTube channel. So in today's section, I'm going to be introducing something that is fresh. Something that is fresh, known as the International Experience Canada. International Experience Canada, commonly called the IEC. 2024 is open right now. So in this section, I'm going to introduce to you, and we're going to be discussing in details what and what you need to do in terms of who is eligible for the International Experience Canada 2024. What do you need to be eligible what is the processing time? What are the three pathways in this IEC and which one is most suitable for you, given your you know unique situation? Okay, so stay tuned on this channel and remember stay till the end if you want to know the eligible countries and how long um your work permit is it open, is it closed? All those juicy details we are going to be discussing in the few minutes i'm going to try to make this short and sweet stay tuned so what is the international experience canada so every year this is a program that lets young people travel live and work in canada temporarily okay People from more than 36 eligible countries can apply for a Canadian work permit without LMIA. I will repeat, without the almighty LMIA, which is the Labor Impact uh, Labor Market Impact Assessment. So you do not require LMIA to come to Canada to work. But however, remember, this is temporarily, okay, between two to three years. So I'm going to discuss all those details as we move along. So the objective of this program is to help individuals learn about the Canadian culture and you support Canada's economy while doing that. Because while even you're on vacation, you're also working, you're earning and you're paying your tax. It's all about the tax money, right? So this program has one of the shortest processing time i've seen one of the shortest processing time i've seen and one thing i like about this program is that the experience you will gain while on this program can also count towards your pathway to permanent residency so as you gain this experience it's gonna count towards your pathway to what permanent residency okay so is a double win right it's a win-win situation coming as you're vacationing you are doing some some work for a set employer and you are gaining that canadian experience and if you like the country yeah. you work your way through to permanent residency i mean what is that <laughs> so now in this program there are two key changes that's gonna be happening in 2024 two principal key changes come 2024 okay now there are two countries that will be added to the 36 initially they were 34 but now there will be 36 countries eligible for this iec those two countries will be meeting as we go along in this discussion okay so in 2024 ircc will also be using, will be using the automation tool Okay, to process the IEC application more quickly. So initially we have four weeks processing time. So I mean, when they deploy this uh, automation tool come 2024 to process IEC, who knows? We might be looking at a week processing time. Nothing is impossible, right? So those are the two key changes. So what is the um, automation tool all about? It, it is simply a tool that you know enables applications to be to be ranked based on their you know complexity so the tool ranks the application based on how complex the application is 
and helps officers, you know, to attend to the easier ones faster and quicker and get it what out of the way. Now, a quick look at 2023 when you talk about IEC, how many um, applicants were, you know, um, accepted? So if we look at 2023, when we talk about the IEC, how many people were accepted to work in, um, in Canada temporarily in using this program? Mm. So in the three categories, okay, let me give you, you know, a quick idea into these three categories. So in 2023, in the working holiday visa category, a whooping 116,030 invitations to apply for open work permits we are issued a hundred and sixteen thousand and thirty invitations to apply what we call the ita we are issued okay so in the young professionals category which is the second category in this iec about eight thousand and fifty six invitations we are issued whereas in the international co-op we had about four thousand 488 invitations issued okay so a few things to remember quickly you know this work permit is valid for either 12 or 24 months depending on your country of citizenship okay these applicants are invited from the pool now when you submit your application you enter a pool I remember it's some first come first served so when you are invited out of the pool to qualify which happens every week okay unlike the you know express entry which normally it should ideally happen by weekly but we've seen cases where it doesn't happen after a month or a couple of weeks okay but this over the time has proven to occur every week until the slot is filled okay so once they reach their margin the cap they will stop but if they haven't reached you know their target number they will issue at itas every week okay so the first round of invitation we are expecting this to happen um around um january the 8th 2024 okay and usually you have four weeks you know to create your profile and participate in the first draw of IEC 2024 so you still have time you know to gather the documents so stay with me I will tell you the things you require to put in place within the four weeks that you have create your profile and wait for the draw of January the 8th 2024 now additionally your selection for program depends on the quota because each of these 36 eligible countries they have uh, a defined number of people you know they are expected to bring in so you being selected depends on you know the quota of your country okay um now how many options do we have so we have three three, three separate options in the IEC number one is what you call the working holiday visa and you have the young professionals then the number three is what you call the international co-op so you have the working holiday the young professionals and the international co-op so you can very well apply through any of these three but remember there are differences privileges um, among these three so if you stay with me on this video i will tell you what these three categories are all about and at the end of the day you'll have a clear understanding of the very best pathway for you to follow getting values please like comment and subscribe to this channel that will help us grow thank you so kindly now i will break down these three categories one at a time so first and first when we talk about the working holiday okay now this is a perfect visa for applicants who wants the freedom so working holiday is a perfect visa for any applicant who wants or who desires to have freedom to work for any employer any employer in canada so what does that mean 
This working holiday visa grants you an open work permit. This means that you can change your employer and your location while in Canada. So you can work for an employer for three months if you desire and find something better, you move. That is the privilege of a working holiday visa. So it comes with an open work permit. However, when you talk about the young professionals, okay, okay, what is it all about? Now, the young professional class, you know, grants you a closed work permit in the sense that you, you are not allowed to change your employer. You know, once your application is approved, for for sure, you're going to mention an employer that you intend to work with or for while in Canada. You are not allowed to change it. Okay? So you are granted a closed work permit. Okay? And you need to have, you know, a valid Canadian job offer. You need to have a job offer. I remember, I remember during my time at the University of Winnipeg, right? Some guy came from France, I believe he through this pathway, you know, for a, a, a part of his PhD program. So it means that someone who is studying as well can partake. And that will take us to the third point where I will call the international co-op. International co-op. What is this pathway all about? Now, if you have, um, take for example, you are still in school, and in, as part of your educational pursuit or your degree or whatever, you are a diploma, usually a degree program, you are, this, you are required to go for an internship. So you can find an employer who is willing to employ you um, on an internship basis in Canada and using the international co-op, you can come work for that employer for maybe a year Usually, internships are not more than one year in Canada. So you can get an employer who is desirous of having someone come over to do an internship with them as part of your post-secondary education. You will go through the international co-op. Okay. So under this program, applicants, usually they will get what you call the employer-specific work permit. So it's, an, it's a closed work permit, not the open work permit. Okay, so I, I remember, you know, during my time working in a lab at University of Winnipeg, some guy came from, I think, France or Germany, if I'm not mistaken, as part of his um, PhD program to work in our lab. So it's an international co-op, which you can do if your country is also eligible, you know, to partake in this program, okay? So it simply means that, in a nutshell, for the working visa, you have an open work permit. For the young professionals, you have a closed work permit. For the international cohort, you have a closed work permit, but your internship must be a part of your post-secondary education. I hope this is clear enough, right? If it's clear, please like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Thank you while doing that. Now, let's talk about the cost. Because whenever you talk about migration, travel, it's all about money, right? So, what is the cost for these three categories? Now, when you talk about the holiday, you know, working holiday participants, definitely all you must have to pay, all of them, whichever pathway you want to follow, you must pay IEC fee of $172. Now, because you have an open work permit, if you are coming through the working holiday, you need to pay the open work permit fee of a hundred Canadian dollars. Okay, now for both young professional and international co-op, because it's employer specific, your employer will grant you that employment letter. So your employer will need to pay, not you, your employer will pay 230 Canadian dollars and submit your offer of employment to IRCC. Now, using that, they will generate a seven digit employment number, which your employer will give you, usually starts with letter A. Employer will give you and you submit your application with that number. 
you have to impute that employer um, that employer number that's correct you have to impute that employer number during your application before submitting that to IRCC okay now in terms of um, proof of fund that's another exciting part for this take a guess how much do you think it's just two thousand five hundred dollars is required as a proof of fund whereas in the study round they're talking about over twenty thousand dollars this pathway just two thousand five hundred dollars is what is required as a proof of fund by IRCC because they expect that this amount should be able to sustain you at least three months while you get a job here in Canada this is amazing now the other things you might be able to you know spend some money if needed is when you are told to do medicals those that want to work in the health sector you know you have to do some medicals if biometrics is needed from you, you have to pay for that and also most importantly you need to have a health insurance that will cover you th throughout um, your stay here in Canada whether you are staying for a year or two years your health insurance very important because you don't qualify for what you call the Ontario health insurance um, plan the OHIP if you are coming to Ontario or other provinces okay so you don't qualify for the free medical care that permanent residents enjoy in Canada okay so you have to purchase your own health insurance which is pretty much easy because I recently purchased for someone who is gonna stay for about five months and um, what the insurance company gave us is less than five hundred dollars so if you do the math maybe in a year you're gonna be paying about one thousand dollars which is still doable okay so your insurance must cover your duration um, for your stay and you might should act and you should also be careful when you're purchasing that insurance that it covers you know medical expenses um, hospitalization um, your repatriation back to your country in case God forbid the person dies your insurance should also cover those getting values please like comment and subscribe to our channel thank you so kindly as you do that okay who is eligible who and who are eligible you know to partake in this program so your country of citizenship must have this agreement with Canada there should be an agreement between your country of citizenship and Canada for this program or you may as well use what you call the recognized organizations so what are recognized organizations these are Canadian based organizations you know that help youths to travel internationally through the IEC okay they could be for profit organization on you know non-profit or for educational purposes most of them actually will charge you a fee for their services so first thing you must come from this country from these 36 eligible countries to participate okay so number two you must be between the ages of 18 and 35 okay so how do we apply you simply create an IEC profile the link to that profile will be in the video description below if you have verified that your country is among the 36 eligible country go to that website create an IEC profile okay you pay the requisite fee which is like I said before 172 Canadian dollars and you enter the pool so once you are in that pool and you get um, invitation to apply so usually what happens is IEC will conduct random draws and take people from the pool yes, right? Right. it is on first come first serve basis the earlier you get into the pool the better like I said remember first draw is happening January 8 2024 so get ready okay so once you get that ITA invitation to apply, you can either accept if you want it 
or you decline if you don't want them. <laughs> like I don't, uh, but I don't, I don't think anybody will decline anyways. Now, if you happen to decline, you go back into the pool, okay, and wait for another draw. But if you want to accept the ITA, you have 10 days. You have 10 days to accept that ITA. So after your acceptance of the ITA, you have 20 days to submit an online application. If you have 20 days to submit an online application, it simply means you should be getting ready. Okay. Now, if you are requested to do a biometrics, IROCC will inform you within 24 hours that you are required to give your biometrics and you schedule for that and pay the requisite fees in any visa um, application center near you okay now once this is done and your application is um successful you will receive a point of entry letter of introduction in your online account okay so this letter of introduction is what you will submit to the um canadian border services at your point of entry which is commonly in your airport. Yeah. This is what they will process to give you your work permit. Whether it is open for working holiday or closed for young professionals and international co-op. Getting values? Please like, comment and subscribe to this YouTube channel to help us grow. Now, like I said before, the processing time is usually four weeks okay so there are specific new changes we expecting come 2024 now these changes are for for those in uh, um, the Britons um, the Koreans the Chileans okay so I've given you three countries already that are eligible for this there are specific changes in terms of the how many um, years they can apply and how they can apply in between first and second applications and things like that so these details you will find them in this video description and also in the link in this um, video description as well okay so aside these three countries that you know have let the cat out of the bag which other countries are eligible let's take a look at these countries it the 36 eligible countries for the international experience canada 2024 what are you waiting for if you are from any of these countries please get to work use the information you've um, acquired in this session and if you are willing to explore the beauty of canada while gaining valuable experience and growth maybe the international experience canada 2024 is for you remember four weeks processing time 2500 canadian dollars puf pathway to permanent residency through the canadian experience class what is there to lose for further details please use the link in this video and do not forget to like comment share and subscribe to this youtube channel that will help us grow and that will also help you gain valuable knowledge and take your migration dream to reality I will see you in yet another one. Adios.